Hello and welcome retro wrestling fans to another retro review. Today we are looking at Wrestlemania. It has been 30... No, it's not. It's been 20 years. <laughs> not 30 years. 20 years since Wrestlemania 19. It took place on the 30th. That's where I'm getting confused. The 30th of March 2003. And it came to you from the Safeco Field in Seattle, Washington. The official attendance was 54,097 at the Safeco Field. Main event, of course, is for the WWE Championship. And it is between Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. There are some fantastic matches on this card. And... Well, we've got to get through them all. So, this is WrestleMania 19. You are watching Cheap Shot Entertainment or listening to the podcast on Talk is Cheap. And, uh, yeah, we've got a lot to get through. So, without further ado, let's get into the main part of the video. In the meantime, you know what to do. If you like the video, like the video and share it with your friends and do all that kind of stuff. Or you can join us on social media and make sure you get that conversation started because we've got a lot to talk about in this one. Join me in the main part of the video. This is awesome! This is awesome! So this is WrestleMania. It is the first WrestleMania since they got the F out in 2002. And by all intents and purposes, even though this was a really good pay-per-view, it did quite disappointing in the buy rates, which came in at about 560,000 um, in America. And um, yeah, it's it wasn't great, <laughs> considering. But as far as the show actually goes, it is an absolute cracker. And as I mentioned, it took place on the 30th of March 2003 which is exactly 30, 20 years and then it is again 20 years ago today so um, of course we get the standard pre-show and uh, it is on Sunday Night Heat it is Storm, Lance Storm and William Regal the un-Americans going against the Dudleys on this night and uh, it is for the tag team championships and with a four hour show with uh, the Miller Lite catfight girls and things like that you would have thought this might have been able to be put onto the main card but there you go it is the pre-show someone's got to start and it's still a payday at the end of the day so yeah it's a decent tag team match um, they all get their spots in and they didn't get too long to do it because obviously they had to plug the card, the rest of the card on the main show. But for all intents and purposes, that's what it is. It is the uh, tag match and the tag team champions retain over the Dudleys. And I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five just because it is a decent match for what they had to work with. And as a trainee wrestler, sometimes you get given a certain amount of time to work to and you just have to work to it there's no other way of doing things so three cheap shots out of five for this one so on to the main show now and after a rousing rendition of america the beautiful we get introduced to the miller light catfight girls that is not a sponsored mention of Miller Lite but if you want to send some money my way I'm not going to complain anyway Miller Lite Catfire Girls they are part of the show <laughs> don't really need to take it take say much more they get introduced they arrive and people go yay and that's about it we also get to see in the back Nathan Jones has been taken out of the match the tag team match with the Undertaker um, would this be a loss, who knows? But uh, yeah, we'll get on to that in a moment. Limp Biscuit come out next. We've still not had any wrestling yet apart from the pre show. Limp Biscuit come out ne next, and they are WWE's favourite band of 2003. Uh, and they're um, 
official song of WrestleMania is Crack Addict, and that tells you how much wrestling has changed in 20 years. It's Crack Addict by Limp Biscuit. Now Limp Biscuit suck, and WWE wouldn't be promoting a song called Crack Addict. But there you go. So, um, yeah, they do their rendition of Crack Addict. To be fair, it's not a bad live performance. I've seen worse on WrestleMania, but uh, there you go. Finally, <laughs> we get into uh, the main part of the card, and uh, we're going straight into this one. Um, as soon as I find my notes, hold on a second. I will find them. Uh, here we go. Right, okay. Got it. Right, so we're going into the main part of the card now. So, <clears throat> it is the Cruiserweight Championship on first. And it is Matt Hardy versus Rey Mysterio in this match. Uh, Matt Hardy's fought hard to get to the weight he needed to be in order to win the championship in the first place. Um, I think it was around 215 pounds at the time. Obviously, the newer cruiserweight division, which is now defunct, it was 205, hence 205 Live. And uh, unfortunately, because they gave that sort of pre-show status, it never really got going, took it down to NXT and then blended it with the national the north american championship rather not the national championship that is nwa which you can see on wednesdays on youtube and it is absolutely free and it is great nwa power that is um so yes let's uh let's get back to this okay so <clears throat> matt hardy is obviously the stronger of the two. Rey Mysterio is the more traditional cruiserweight on this match. Um, there's a lot of backing and forth thing. Matt Hardy with the strikes. He's a more of a striker. He does have a few high-flying moves, whereas Rey Mysterio is quick and fast. He's very lucha in the style that he uses. Uh, it's a style that I will never, ever use, but I can appreciate it for the time. And he can still do it now, which is absolutely amazing because he is cracking on in years, isn't he? And he's uh, having a match with his son, I believe, at WrestleMania 39, which is crazy. Because the last time before Dominic got put onto the main show, uh, main shows, last time we saw Dominic, his dad was beating Eddie Guerrero in a, uh, in a uh, what was it, adoption papers on a... On a pole match or whatever it was. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. 2005, we'll get to that in a couple of years' time. Um, it is Matt Hardy who retains, so that is two championships on the line, and two championships retained on this one. So what am I going to give this one? I'm going to give this one a three cheap shots out of five. It's very middle of the road. It is good for what it is i love the cruise weight division if they ever did it right wcw got it right wwe could never quite get over the fact that they were cruise weights um but there you go three cheap shots out of five so the next match is supposed to be a tag team match but it turns out to be a 201 handicap match as the undertaker was supposed to be tagging with the colossus of boggo road nathan jones Against the Big Show and A-Train, who actually form a formidable tag team. The Undertaker looking to continue his streak at WrestleMania here at WrestleMania 19. Ten years after what is considered to be his worst match of the streak against the Giant Gonzalez. Is Undertaker going to pull it back on this one? Well, the answer is yes, because the three men that were left in the ring after Nathan Jones was taken out actually put on a really good show. Um, I was really thoroughly entertained by this. It did everything a two-on-one handicap match should do. There was plenty of peril. Undertaker doing plenty of comebacks. Lots of heat being worked here by the Big Show and A-Train, who are both bigger than The Undertaker, but combined, they are just colossal. Um, you know, you, you think uh, 
the natural disasters on steroids, basically. They are huge and uh, they know how to do things. But obviously the big show at this point in time was being singled out as being a bit too big. He's turned himself around now. He looks absolutely fab um, more recently. But um, yeah, it, it is it is what it is. So Undertaker manages to hold his own. He is coming up against it. The uh, the opponents, the Big Show, A-Train, are just battering him as well. And it comes to a point where Nathan Jones does manage to come down the ramp and give, I think it's Big Show, a spinning heel kick in order for the uh, tombstone to be hit as Nathan Jones comes back into action and The Undertaker to pick up the victory, all for the sake of waving that those stars and stripes and the American flag, um, obviously not too far removed from uh, 2001, 9-11 and uh, the falling of the Trade Centre. So, good feel, a feel-good moment here with The Undertaker waving the flag and having his big entrance with Limp Bizkit singing him to the ring, getting rolling and all that kind of stuff. Nathan Jones was taken out because um, rumour has it that he wasn't good <laughs> at the time and Undertaker really didn't want to be in the ring with him because he found him a bit too dangerous. So, uh, yeah, he just didn't get his WrestleMania moment, I suppose. As well. uh, then again, he did. I mean, he didn't do very much, but hey, it's a payday, isn't it? And it's WrestleMania. He got to walk down the ramp at WrestleMania, the granddaddy of them all, the one that we all sit up until four o'clock on two days now uh, for at WrestleMania. But I'm going to give this one three and a half cheap shots out of five. You may wonder what my thinking is behind this. I thought the structure of the match was really good. It was thoroughly entertaining. It is an Undertaker match. I love The Undertaker. And also A-Train and Big Show are brilliant as well. So why not give it three and a half cheap shots out of five? So the next bit is kind of uh, just an interlude segment, really. It's not anything brilliant, but we get to see the uh, Miller Lite cat fight girls who are arguing currently over who is the creator of WrestleMania, whether it was Hulk Hogan or Vince McMahon. They are joined by Tori and Stacey, who are also arguing over who created WrestleMania. And I think we can all be very on point here when we say that, uh, yeah, I'm not going to answer that question. Um, <laughs> personally, I think they're both arseholes. But as characters, they are brilliant. And in wrestling terms, obviously, it was Vince McMahon who made WrestleMania what it was. It was his idea. So Hulk Hogan was just along for the ride and he got his paychecks along the way. So there you go. <clears throat> we move on now to some serious women's action as the women get an actual match at WrestleMania. It is a... Uh, let me just check this. If I haven't written down what kind of match it is. It is a triple threat. I thought it was. It's a triple threat for the women's championship. It is Trish Stratus going against Victoria, the champion, and Jazz. All three of these ladies are absolutely excellent when it comes to the graps. And uh, they put on a really good show with the amount of time that they were given. Which, in hindsight, wasn't a lot. But it was never going to be a lot. It was always going to be um, on the short side because of how the women were treated at this point in time with wrestling. Um, so, it is... It is what it is, and I really, I did enjoy this match, and I think it was absolutely great that at the time they were given this match, that uh, Finlay was actually training them, which is even better, and um, hold on a second, there we go, um, so yeah, Finlay was training them at the time. And uh, they managed to get their stuff in 
without actually getting stuff in because Victoria is a very well accomplished wrestler. Jazz was just amazing in ECW in that environment and Trish had really put in the effort here with the wrestling side of things and um, it would be that um, Trish Stratus would get the victory here um, over over Victoria rather and um, Victoria and Jazz because well yeah they uh, was really high on Trish and why not she worked her arse off to get to the status that she was at she did incredibly well to come from being a valet with big boobs to women's champion multiple times and uh, yeah it is brilliant um really good i'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five again i know i'm giving a lot of threes but it's really good for a divas match of its time uh, and a uh, you could see the corner being turned at this point, you know, going through being a fitness model to being a diva and just being put in a bikini and taken photos of to being a champion at WrestleMania. Trish did a fantastic job of carrying that flag for the women's division that is now. So, you know, they have a lot to uh, be thankful for to Trish for this match. And like I say, I'm going to give it three cheap shots out of five. Backstage segment next. And we don't get to see the Miller Lite Catfight Girls. Thank goodness for that. It is The Rock with the coach. And he says he doesn't care about the people because they boo him since he was, since he's gone to Hollywood. The Rock couldn't care less about the people in case you couldn't tell The Rock was in full. Heel mode on this one. And he says that in Hollywood, he learned that Act 1 and Act 2 don't matter as much as Act 3. With reference, obviously, to the two matches previously that Stone Cold Steve Austin has won against The Rock previously at WrestleMania. And that is why this is so important. He guaranteed the win and he says that he'll have it done yeah, having done it all finally he will get the win over stone cold steve austin the rock is just amazing at promos if you want to learn how to cut a promo you know most people know how the rock cut his promos but he was fantastic everything that needed to be said was said in a way that just captured an audience, whether they wanted to boo him or cheer him, it didn't matter, he knew what to do. And sometimes he could change mid-match, which is a skill only for the very seasoned veterans in the world of professional wrestling. Um, we move on now, It's got another. we've got another tag team title match, it is for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, the WWE championships as they were at the time uh, basically a remold of the old championships but in blue and they were beautiful absolutely beautiful my favorite tag team titles of all time i think apart from the 90 the 80s 90s versions but we've got the tag team titles on the line it is team angle shelton benjamin charlie horse versus los guerreros eddie guerrero eddie and charvo of course and uh, chris benoit and Rhino, the man beast. <clears throat> so only two guys were allowed in the ring at once. This being a triple threat match. Obviously the same rules apply here. Tags are mandatory though. Um, but the rules are in a triple threat match. Is that basically there's no disqualification. So um, yeah, we get a bit of a barnstormer here. It is, <clears throat> as you can imagine how good this match was got Chris Benoit it's got team angle in it the Guerreros are fantastic and then you've got the unpredictability of Rhino this was a good match very talented teams um again 
bit too short for my liking. Um, I think it hurt the match that they had to get so much in in such a short amount of time. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Shelton Benjamin gets the win <clears throat> and rolls up uh, Charvo to get the victory. Just less than 10 minutes for this one, which again, like I say, a bit short for, for it. But clever finish. Um, if it wasn't set up by some weak spots but it is good um but the tag teams deserved more in this one the tag team division and smackdown at the time was just phenomenal and it should have been given more time um and i think it was the first mania that we saw these titles involved because of the brand split and things so that would have been Brilliant, because we didn't get the original draft, I think, until after WrestleMania 18. So, yeah, it was the first time we saw these particular titles and the uh, World Tag Team Championships defended. One was on the pre-show and the other one got 10 minutes on the main show. Damn shame. But I'm going to give this match, because it was good, I'm going to give it three cheap shots out of five. Again, very standard Um very standard rating for this show up until we get to the more main card matches that have been given more time to do things and like I say being a trainee wrestler I have no idea how they remember to do all the things that they do but they do it and they do, that's why they're professional um, so once again three cheap shots out of five for this one to the backstage again, we see Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler still arguing over who created WrestleMania. The Catfight girls come in and then they say there's one way to decide this and that is with a pillow fight. And they challenge them to a pillow fight on the main card. And the actual women's match didn't get as long as this one did when we get to it. But we'll gloss over that. We're not going to give that a score or any kind of time because it doesn't need it um and we go on to one of the best matches at a wrestlemania period and definitely one of the better matches on this particular card at wrestlemania 19 because we've got Shawn michaels versus chris jericho at wrestlemania 19 and yeah it was great the whole package behind this match was Jericho idolised Shawn Michaels then found out he was a fraud and just playing the massive heel here um, you know hugging him then low blowing him and just turning his back on him he's wearing baby blue here and that is good psychology I mean you don't really see many heels wearing baby blue and uh, yeah damn good psychology from Chris Jericho with this one. Obviously Shawn Michaels comes down with all the pyrotechnics and things as well, which again gets Jericho really wound up. And uh, But tell you something, this match, if you're gonna watch a match before this year's WrestleMania, I would recommend this one be on your list because it is an absolute, with a, we can't describe it any other, but it is a showstopper. It is brilliant. Such a good match. And uh, yeah, they really lay it all on the line. Play a brilliant heel face dynamic. The spots are amazing. We don't go for anything huge until the end. Then you've got the multiple kick outs. You've got Northern Lights suplexes, which you don't see very much. The crowd is going nuts all the way through this match. They've got them in the palm of their hand here. Um, you know, you've got HBK in the walls of Jericho storied, um, you know, he's storied about his back injury and obviously the walls of Jericho, Boston Crab. Um, they're given a good amount of time here. Um, Jericho grabs um <coughs> HBK but HBK gives him a roll up and 
gets the win um, here. So we get two roll ups in a row and I would have thought that this match might have been a bit more definitive than it was, but it doesn't take away from it. It is an outstanding match and a lot of hype going into it. The WrestleMania return of Shawn Michaels as an active competitor um, is one of the best matches that I've seen, period. And uh, the commentary at this time really did that justice as well. Uh, you just cannot deny that the King and JR are two of the best commentators and one of the best commentary teams uh, ever. And you've also got Michael Cole and Taz on the other side and a combination that I never thought I would actually like, but they're brilliant as well. And um, yeah, you just got um, every element here apart from a definitive finish. I was hoping that um, there was going to be a full on super kick here and a finish. But, you know, the cradle was interesting. It was an interesting way of doing things in such a big match. But I would have rather been definitive with the super kick for the win. But Shawn Michaels wins. What a match, four cheap shots out of five. Uh, and like I say, I can't praise this match highly enough. If you want structure, if you want a really, really good match to watch before WrestleMania 39, then this one should be on your list. Right, so we go to a video segment of Tori Wilson being announced as a Playboy cover girl. And we go to coach next near the entrance of WrestleMania 19, where we find a king size bed that um, is going to be used for the next. I don't, I don't even want to call this a match because it's not. Basically, it's the Miller Cat Fight Girls pillow fight in which Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler come down and make it a fatal four-way. They end up pantsing Coach, rolling him up and pinning him. No one wanted to see that. No one, well, I suppose certainly no one wanted to see the cat fight girls. They did. It was 2003. And uh, while they're very good looking, um, it's, it's not fun to look at these days. It, it really is not. It's not a good look. Um, but as I said before, the women have come a long way and that's a good thing. Just a shame that this was on the main card rather than the tag team championships and the actual women's match got about the same amount of time as this one. Um, so we'll move on uh, to the next match. And um, <clears throat> it is the world title match for the World Heavyweight Championship gifted to Triple H by uh, Eric Bischoff, I almost forgot his name, and uh, yeah, he's going against uh, Booker T in this one, uh, an interesting choice, they're trying to give the WCW guys, ex-WCW guys, the rubber the green here, but I mean, it was never going to be anything other than a Triple H win, this year is often touted as the year where Triple H finally buried WCW, and who's to argue uh, after after beating Steiner twice? But that's how it should be because Steiner just did not look great. And um, yeah, after beating Rick Steiner twice, uh, we've now got Booker T. Booker T was actually an active competitor. He was there every week on Raw. He's a very good competitor as well. And uh, definitely should have been considered for the championship before he was. But, uh, you know, that would come later on on SmackDown for him, which I'm really pleased about. But after getting some bits and bobs in here at, at WrestleMania, it sadly wasn't to be as Ric Flair was at ringside. And there was a lot of choking, punching, chops and exchanges uh, being made. Uh, you know, suplexes. This was a much better match <coughs> than the Scott Steiner matches 
by far. And uh, although WWE really put WCW over, they seem to want to put Booker T over. There was a lot of things that he did, the Houston, Houston hangover and things like that. Um, he misses the... Uh, Five, I don't even know what to call it. The uh, scissor kick, Triple H reverses it into a pedigree and uh, Hunter crawls over, covers Booker T for the win and Triple H wins. I'm going to give this match three and a half cheap shots out of five. There would be better matches on the card um, coming up, which we're going to get to. Um, JR and Lawler calling a classic. And it was an epic battle from start to finish. And it was good. And it was a good match. Um, and Hunter did okay. Even though this was a... Like I say, it was a dry spot in his career. Where he just walked out. And politics took over. And he, he would win. So for him to give Booker T as much as he did. There was obviously a lot of respect there. And uh, yeah. He... he did much better than Scott Steiner, who we got straight after the Shawn Michaels feud, which, you know, was amazing. Which, uh, yeah. So, there you go. Triple H retains the World Heavyweight Championship and uh, we can look forward to Backlash, where Goldberg <laughs> returns. Well, he doesn't return. He makes his debut uh, on uh, in WWE. So, yeah, there we go. That's that. So before the next match, we get the announcement that WrestleMania 20 is going to take place at Madison Square Garden, which is pretty darn cool because we haven't had a WrestleMania or any major pay-per-view at Madison's, Madison Square Garden since then. And uh, we know we're talking nearly 20 years now. They do still go back. It is the spiritual home of WWE, of course. Um, so that's... Uh, Never going to be an issue, but as far as main pay-per-views go, they went bigger, they went better, and they started booking into uh, full-on stadiums and, and filling them, to be fair to them. So, why not? If you're going to make money, you might as well make money, eh? Um, but we go on to one of the main matches on the card. It is a grudge match between Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon based on the fact that Vince McMahon screwed Hulk Hogan at No Way Out against The Rock. And who made who? Did Hulk Hogan make Vince McMahon? Or did Vince McMahon make Hulk Hogan? Vince seems to think that he made Hogan and then he left him, he turned his back on him, and he doesn't like that, obviously. So this is where the match comes from. Great hype video, you don't get these anymore. Um, to show the history, the pomp and circumstance of WrestleMania and what it means to so many people. You get the nice music, the score and everything. It's just, it gets really hyped for this match. Um, <clears throat> and then we move on. Gene is announcing this one, which is great. Um, you know, uh, if it weren't for these two, there would be no WrestleMania. Uh, Vince wanted to kill Hulkamania. Hogan wanted to keep it going. That led to this street fight. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so Hogan comes out first to a huge pop. Although I did watch this on the network. I haven't got WrestleMania 19 on DVD. When it comes to WrestleMania 20, then when I do that next year, I may watch it on DVD rather than on the network because it, it does get edited. And uh, I got the feeling that the cheering noises and things like that were pumped into this one um and he comes out to a really pants version of voodoo child on this one on the dvd it is real american apparently so and then vince comes out in his standard black attire um looking like he's pooped himself and uh yeah there we go. We get stared out in the middle of the ring. Something, something that we don't see very often anymore is a stare down. 
people need to do this more. More shows need this stare down moment, especially in big matches before the referee separates them and says, you know, we're not want a nice clean fight and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> Vince slaps Hulk Hogan and then Hulk Hogan knocks him down with a clothesline and then we get the punches. Um, you know, Brian Hebner is the referee for this one. Hogan is on SmackDown after all uh, at this point in time. And, uh, you know, we get arm bars. We get lots of rest holds here. Basics, but good. Um, this then goes to, uh, you know, it goes to the outside. Vince puts Hulk Hogan through the announce table, takes out the Spanish announce uh, <laughs> rather than the Spanish announce table. Before he takes out the Spanish announce table, you've got to do things properly, you've got to do it right. It makes you wonder now. You know, there's not as many table spots now the Spanish announce table's gone. Well, that's why, you see, because they always took out the Spanish announce table rather than the, rather than the American one. Uh, Hugo Sabinovich gets a smack in the forehead with a chair uh, for his troubles and kudos to him for taking that. This was a point where headshots were rife and they didn't protect and all that kind of stuff and obviously we now get uh, wind that, I mean, we should have, known, should have really known, put two and two together, that uh, taking headshots with steel chairs whether they're steel or not, is not a good idea in a wrestling match. So, uh, yeah, so get chair shots, everyone's busted open, Hulk Hogan, Hugo Savinovich, the, uh, and, and Vince McMahon, all busted. Um, and, uh, yeah, these two crazy guys, uh, you know, kind of tell us what a uh, uh, Saturday night would be with these two. Um, so yeah, like I say, the crowd is eating this up, including me. I still love this match, and, and my score is going to reflect that, even though it wasn't much of a wrestling match. And you got two 50 year olds trying to beat each other up, it was still very thoroughly entertaining. And you know why? Because they know how to tell a story. I always say that wrestling is not just about the moves, it's not just about the athleticism, that forms a huge part. But if you can't tell a story while you're doing stuff, if you can't make people want to either save you or boo you, then you're not doing something right. And the truly best performers in professional wrestling are the ones that can do the moves, can make them look good and can tell a story while doing it. And, uh, you know, that doesn't get taught very often in professional wrestling schools, especially in the UK. Um, but there you go, that's that. Silver and Ranier comes down after the ref bump and uh, he gets taken out. We get another referee and uh, Brian Hebner comes back, slides in, has the count after the big boot and the leg drop and Hulk Hogan wins. There's one got 20 minutes. Um, it wasn't a good match by any means, but my Gosh, was it entertaining? Hell, yes, it was. And uh, like I say, you got two crazy 50 year olds, uh, Taz and Cole, selling like crazy for this one. And a lot of, uh, you know, tension, a lot of story being built up. 20 years of storyline between these two. And it just, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. I'm going to give it four cheap shots out of five. I know I've given that more than the World Heavyweight Championship match, but what's not to like about two crazy 50-year-olds beating each other up? Again, you wouldn't see that now. Back in 2003, excellent. Well, how did WWE follow on from two crazy 50-year-olds beating each other up? They follow it with two crazy 40-year-olds beating each other up, but... Two crazy active 40-year-olds, active wrestlers. Um, obviously, Hulk Hogan was active at the time, and Vince wasn't, and shouldn't probably ever point himself, himself in a match, but he has to be at WrestleMania, of course. It is Vince McMahon. These two absolutely deserve to be there, and this, you know, we talk about 20 years uh, build-up for the Hogan 
Vince McMahon match. This match has been built up for years. This is, you know, we're talking probably six, seven years. And they both burst into the scene at the same time. They've had two previous meetings at Mania. Austin's won both of them at WrestleMania 15. Um, and then uh, WrestleMania 17. 15, he won straight out. He won the championship after winning the Royal Rumble. 17, he sold his soul to the devil in Vince McMahon. This one, The Rock is heel. And again... And uh, Pure Heel and Stone Cold is the face. And there's a lot of storied history behind this rivalry, but also behind this match. Because if you've read uh, the Stone Cold Truth, the, um, the, uh, the biography by Stone Cold Steve Austin, one of the very first paragraphs is alluding to this match and him basically having a mini heart attack before going out. Uh, to this match he his blood pressure was so high that he probably shouldn't have done it but yet he still wanted to go out there and and entertain people and both get big pops i love the rocks music i love the hollywood rock character stone cold steve austin never changed even when he went evil when he went heel full heel and joined the um joined the invasion and the alliance he never ever changed his character really uh just ever so slightly be a bit more silly but apart from that he was the same all the way through and this match has been assigned to earl hebner the only person that could take on this match it's like a, a spire if we have a championship match it's always going to go to neil it doesn't matter who else is refereeing? It's going to Neil. He's the one that is the head referee. He's the one with all the experience, much like Hell Hebner in this one. This match, I don't need to tell you, it's a spot fest. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, at one point, The Rock just goes full heel, gets Austin's jacket, puts it on, starts doing the impression of him. Stone Cold gets up, gives him, <laughs> gives him a Stone Cold stunner. It's brilliant. And... <clears throat> It's uh, yeah. It it's two masters of their craft. They're both strikers, but they're also both very technically gifted as well. And uh, you know, uh, the Rock sells the stunners absolutely brilliantly. And the one he sold here, you got to wonder why he didn't get a three. But you know, it adds to the drama. This is how you do multiple finishes in a match and still create drama that doesn't suck the energy out of a room not a million super kicks but one stone cold stunner you can kick out of that's fine you know um and there's a long pause there uh, <clears throat> and the crowd going nuts people's elbow is hit one two nothing rock bottom one, two, nothing. Rock bottom. One, two, nothing. The Rock's looking absolutely puzzled, astonished that the that Stone Cold is kicking out of these. And he goes for one more. One last finish. Stares the crowd down. Hits the Rock bottom. They're all expecting Stone Cold to kick out of this one, to knock it back. He does nearly try and almost gets a stunner in. Um, but the Rock reverses. Again, like I say, looks around and the story rivalry ends with one last rock bottom and then the one, two, three. The rock has finally conquered his demon at WrestleMania in the shape of Stone Cold Steve Austin, the rattlesnake. And this would be Stone Cold's retirement match up until... Last year at WrestleMania, we can't really call that a full-on match. It was just him coming out and Stone Cold stunnering Kevin Owens. He's had more turns than the Big Show at this point in time. But this match, wow. It didn't get as long as Hogan and Vince, but wow, wow, wow. What a match this is. I'm going to give this match... 
four and a half cheap shots out of five because it's just insane right back to 99 right back to 96 when the rock made his debut the stone cold made his debut the same year the famous austin 316 says i just kicked your ass is 1996 king of the ring uh it you know the the paths that these two have taken on are well they're very different after the sword circle but very similar when it comes to the squared circle stone cold's been in films only a few he managed to throw nathan jones off a cliff and make him explode which you know is always a good thing um and uh, yeah like i say four and a half cheap shots out of five so the main event sees another story that has been told absolutely epically Kurt Angle comes in as heel Brock Lesnar playing an unfamiliar face character after being uh, back stabbed in the back by Paul Heyman at Survivor Series for the sake of the big show winning the championship. Um, Kurt Angle would take it off him not much longer after that and uh, Brock Lesnar would win the Royal Rumble. The focus is heavily on the ribs of of uh, Brock Lesnar obviously with a guy his size he uses his power a lot he uses suplexes he uses the F5 all takes core strength and uh, you know he's, he's selling his ribs comes down with them taped and everything gets a huge ovation but then again so does Kurt Angle and he gets all his pyro and obviously Angle's on the poster and he appear on the game and all that kind of stuff by the way WrestleMania 19, the game on GameCube, absolutely nuts. As nuts as two 50-year-olds beating beating each other up. Absolutely nuts. You get the road to WrestleMania mode. I think it's WrestleMania. No, it's WrestleMania Revenge mode, where you have to stop Vince's evil empire from taking over the world. And, um, you know, it's basically just a, a, a side-scrolling beat em up, a 2.5D beat em up, where you have to chuck workers off a scaffolding. It's like, what did they do to you? Um, and why are they fighting for Vince McMahon? Why are you still building the stadium and all this kind of stuff? You're like, WrestleMania 19 has got on the way, pal. You know, you need, you need a stadium. Anyway, <clears throat> enough about the game, but if you've got a copy, absolutely brilliant. If you haven't got a copy... I suggest you track one down. Bear in mind you can play it on a Wii if you've still got a Wii. Very popular console there from Nintendo. Again, not a paid advertisement there. But again, you can play that game on there. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely not. Great time. Anyway, uh, Brock Lesnar comes in as the challenger. Like I say, having won the Royal Rumble going against Kurt Angle. Both on SmackDown. SmackDown was hot. At this time, much better than Raw, in my opinion, at the, at the point of saying this. And uh, I was always a SmackDown guy anyway. So there you go. As you can imagine, lots and lots and lots of suplexes in this match going through it. But to start, going back to the wrestling training again, if you want some tips on how to do basic maneuvers, then... This is the match to watch because these two, obviously ex-amateur wrestlers, Kurt Angle won the Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Brock Lesnar coming through from Minnesota, two-time All-American in wrestling. Both absolutely excellent in, in their craft. Uh, so yeah, this one is a bit of a barnstormer when it comes to that. Focus again, like I say, is on Brock's ribs. Um, lots of punches to the ribs, lots of German suplexes. Obviously, that will, again, tell the story. Beating down on the ribs. If you take out Brock Lesnar's ribs, is he going to be able to get Kurt Angle up for the F5? Is he going to be able to do those devastating suplexes that he does? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. He still gets in all those suplexes. He still gets in... All of his big moves. 
And the biggest move, and it would be played and replayed and used in multiple packages throughout the years for WWE, is the Shooting Star Press. Now, let's get this right. When Brock Lesnar was in Florida Championship Wrestling, which is the equivalent of NXT as it is now, he used to use this move, the Shooting Star Press. He used to use it. Obviously, it was a much smaller ring. I think... Looking at it now, obviously Kurt Angle is too far away. I think Angle has a lot, a big role to play in this and probably sh could have shuffled a little bit. May have looked a bit dodgy, but you know what? If it's for the sake of, of saving a man's life, then yeah, absolutely do it. Um, because when he hits that shooting star press, he doesn't rotate enough. But you've got to think that if Kurt Angle was a bit further in, he wouldn't have landed on his head as much. But there you go. Brock Lesnar's built like a shed. He does take it. He's completely knocked out. You can tell that once the match is finished. He gets the 1-2-3. Kurt Angle is uh, no longer champion. And we get a new WWE champion. And again, the storyline finishes with a feel-good moment if you look into Brock Lesnar's eyes at the end of this match he is completely out of it he does not know where he is and there's a genuine concern there back in the day I was just like yeah he's won woo you know because I was following the story I had the ability to do that watch Smackdown and Raw obviously with the network these days you can't do that because they've sold the rights to Smackdown and Raw to BT Sports in the UK. So you have to have another subscription to be able to watch those. So um, I'm going into WrestleMania blind. And so you know what? Sometimes that is the best way to do things. As I found out uh, watching independent wrestling. You know, to fully enjoy things. Don't go on the internet. Don't look at spoilers. Just watch it as a pure wrestling fan. And you will get a full enjoyment out of it like I have for the last two pay-per-views um, yeah great match apart from the finish I'm going to give it four and a half cheap shots out of five can't give it five I wanted to such a good match but that botched finish and I don't like the word botch but it was just it looked nasty but we do finish with a handshake and a hug and like I say a real good feel good moment and and then you get the, the package taking you through the show. So <clears throat> that is WrestleMania 19. Um, overall, an absolutely brilliant show from start to finish. You've got the Shawn Michaels-Jericho match. Um, the women's match was decent for the amount of time it was given. The real turning point in the women's evolution. Uh, the last two matches, the, uh, World Champion, the WWE Championship match and Stone Cold Rock brilliant um the tri the triple threat tag team match was brilliant for smackdown side um and uh, yeah it was just a really really good pay-per-view and uh, one that i definitely recommend but if you want to watch matches that get you going for wrestlemania bear in mind this is 20 years ago i definitely watch this one, or at least the Shawn Michaels-Jericho match, if you're a trainee wrestler, to know how to tell a full story. And that is it, Cheap Shot Nation. Thank you very much for watching Retro Reviews on YouTube or listening to the podcast on Talk Is Cheap on Spotify. And I will see you next time, Graps fans. Take care. Enjoy WrestleMania. And goodbye. Hiya!